Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we're going to do a uh, follow-up video on the one we did about the 5-inch sprinkler system, uh, was it a couple weeks ago? And this one will be on the 16-inch sprinkler system. Uh, interestingly, it seems that the 5-inch sprinkler system would have also included sprinkler controls for all the nearby anti-aircraft uh, magazines, so like 40 millimeter rounds, things like that. So that, that seemed to be a sprinkler system for that entire system. The 16-inch sprinkler system is exclusively for the 16-inch magazines. We are in Damage Control Central, which is uh, just at the forward end of Broadway. So we're, we're, uh, so we're, we're forward of most of the engineering spaces, more or less directly above uh, forward auxiliary diesel. And uh, this space, we have four controls for flooding the magazines. These are the remote control stations. So we're a small distance away from those magazines. This isn't the local control like in or right outside of the magazines, which we'll go find in a minute. These are the remote stations. Damage Control Central makes sense as the place to have these. And I always assumed that uh, you could just flood all the magazines from right here. As we found out, the five inch guns cannot be flooded from here. And looking into it more, Turret number three has a separate remote flooding station at the aft end of Broadway. Uh, this only floods turrets one and two. So why are there four levers? The magazines are separated into groups, uh, more or less port and starboard, uh, with the idea being if you take a hit, that hit is likely not going to come from the bow and go all the way through. It, it's likely going to come through one of the sides. And uh, so you would need to flood the magazines on one side or the other. You don't want to flood them all necessarily because you're still being shot at. You might want some ammunition with those forward guns. Uh, so turret one and turret two each have a port and starboard group of magazines. And when you hit the lever here and, and put pressure to it by cranking on the handle that would be inserted there, uh, you, you're flooding that entire group of magazines. And, and you can see here, it's, uh, this one's got uh, three separate magazines. This one's got six, four, six, six magazines. So each one is, is a whole group of spaces. Remember our magazines are, are two stories tall in most cases. So if you have any sort of uh, fire that's getting close to the magazines, that would most likely destroy the entire ship. I'm aware of two instances of American fast battleships having to flood their magazines. Uh, Iowa flooded some of their turret two magazines in 1989. And North Carolina flooded some of their turret one magazines in uh, I believe it was 1942 when they took the torpedo hit. And the, like we said in the five inch video, the magazine flooding system is actually a sprinkler system. There, there are pipes in the overhead that are sprinkling water down. It can take as much as an hour to completely flood the space. That's okay. You don't need the space fully flooded. You just need to get the powder wet so it starts to deteriorate and can't burn. Uh, so in both cases, North Carolina and Iowa that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, the, the magazine crews were able to get out of the magazines before those spaces were flooded. I have read two different things about the authority to flood magazines. Uh, I've read from a World War II aircraft carrier damage control manual that any sailor has the authority to flood the magazine. If, if they think that it needs to be flooded, you can just do it. I've also read that um, you need to get the captain's permission to flood the magazine because obviously you're putting a lot of water in the ship and that's going to affect your trim and, and the ship's reserve of buoyancy and, and combat capability. So especially with, say, North Carolina takes a torpedo hit, she's already flooding, and then you try to flood those magazines, you're adding more weight to that side. Is that going to be enough to uh, cause the ship to roll over? So I'm honestly not sure yet what standard operating procedures were on the battleship, and I have a suspicion that it might have varied over time. Regardless, uh, particularly with most of the magazines flooding from here in Damage Control Central, the DCA, Damage Control Assistant, who's in charge of this space, would have a pretty reasonable uh, understanding of the flood situation and the needs to do it, uh, to do it on his own authority if that was necessary. 
but he would also have really direct communication with the bridge and other locations if he needed to secure permission to do it. Like I said, uh, this is just the remote floods for turrets one and two. Turret threes is on the aft end of Broadway, just outside of uh, what is now Marine Birthing. It's basically mounted to the exterior, uh, the, the forward end of the barbette for turret number three. And it looks just like this, except maybe half of the panel. It's only got the two switches. While the powder is stored in the magazines and these switches control that, these are the remote control stations for the turret flooding system or sprinkler system more accurately. There's not enough water in there to actually flood it. The turrets, of course, are where the shells are stored. And while those are relatively inert, having a sprinkler system in there to hold you over until the fire teams can show up with their hoses is a good idea. Because the turret rotates, it's not plumbed. There, there's no plumbing going into it like there is uh, for the magazine sprinkler systems. In the back of each turret, there are two big cylindrical tanks standing up just inside of the hatchway uh, that would be filled with water. And essentially, they just gravity feed that water down through the turret. So if we were to break this and pull the lever, that would drain those two tanks into the gun pits where they're handling ammunition and the shells, and then down onto the shell decks. So uh, now that we've showed the remotes, let's go find the locals. Now we're on the forward end of the mezzanine level in turret two, and you can see that there is a uh, control for flooding the turret from here as well. There's also one up in the gun house. We're not gonna run up there too. They, they all look the same. But uh, more importantly, here you can see the sprinkler system. So you can see where the magazines, uh, it's plumbing with holes in the top and it's just continually deluging until it's flooded the space. Because this is a limited amount of water, it's an actual sprinkler head that's uh, more efficiently dispersing the water. Now we're down on the lowest level of uh, turret two, and we've got at least two different uh, sprinkler systems here. So first off, here's the brass plate that shows the diagram of the full turret sprinkler system where all the heads are, how it's spraying on the shells and in the gun pits, and into the powder hoists, which is what we have down here uh, with this really thin line. Again, th because this part rotates, this is coming from the two reservoir tanks up above and just draining down and it's just doing everything. The hoists, the gun pits, the shell decks, it's doing it all. And again, you can see it, it doesn't take a huge volume of water to destroy. This would have 660 pounds of powder in it potentially in six bags it doesn't take a whole lot to destroy it. Now the other uh, kind of sprinkler we have down here is this. Notice we've got a completely different head. It's right over where the powder bags are being passed. So really anywhere where there's a powder bag or a shell being handled, they've got a sprinkler system set up. And uh, notice this one comes through the bulkhead. This is the non-rotating part of the ship. So this can actually be plumbed into the ship. So it just has like a, a straight down nozzle. It doesn't need anything to disperse it. It does not appear like the magazines have separate valves uh, that, like the five inch magazines do that allow you to open and close. In fact, the overhead in those magazines is so much taller that even if there was a valve in the overhead, it would be very difficult to get to. However, the annular spaces, so through this door, you're inside the turret. Through here, you're in the annular space. Through that door behind me, you start to go towards the magazines. Uh, these are what I am guessing are the local control stations. So there's two of these with each turret. Uh, this one does groups three and four. That's for flooding turret two's magazines. There's another one of these over there, a, a brief distance. Looks almost identical, except it's for groups one and two. I assume that in the annular space for turret three, there's one that does groups five and six for turret three's magazines. And finally for this video, we have an addendum for the first installment in this series, the one on the five inch sprinklers. And in that one, we found a uh, control wheel similar to this one just outside of the magazine in the uh, P-way over there. And uh, a gunner's mate reached out and said, no, no, the remote controls are on Broadway. And here we found the remote control for the magazine on the opposite side, but we haven't been able to find the remote 
for the uh, magazine that we were in previously. I think that one outside the door that we showed uh, is it because it's the same style of wheel. And this one specifically says it's just for the magazines for Mount 51 and 53 on the starboard side. And the one we were in was for guns uh, 52 and 54. Forgive me for not noticing this on Broadway. It's not like it had a big red sign on it or anything. Uh, but in my defense, there are a ton of valves and controls and levers and other things here on Broadway. It, it's kind of a uh, sensory overload with all the various controls. I, I have no idea how sailors figured all this out when they were new on the ship. This space that we're in has five uh, compartment checkoff lists with all the, the valves and things that are in it. Uh, it. It's hard to keep track of it all. Presumably you would have had uh, guys from the engineering department who were looking at what all the fuel cross connects were and damage control men who were looking at what all the water cross connects were and gunners mates who were looking at all of this and we just have one lowly curator with no sea time. So what do you think makes more sense? Any crew member being allowed to flood the magazines if necessary? Or the time delay associated with having the commanding officer make a decision on it? Well, let us know in the comments section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourself. So we really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for more ways you can support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the channel. Thanks for watching. When was the last time you walked beneath a nearly 900 foot battleship without getting wet? Or stood next to an Iowa class propeller three times taller than you? This spring, you can book a tour beneath the Battleship New Jersey, the largest, most decorated battleship in U.S. history while she's in dry dock at the Philadelphia Naval Shipyard. Tens of thousands of gallons of water will be drained from the dock so you can see the hidden workings of one of our nation's all-time greatest military assets. Battleship New Jersey was first launched on December 7, 1942. She epitomizes the awe-inspiring display of American naval power and the indomitable American spirit. Don't miss this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to support the work of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Visit BattleshipNewJersey.org to book your tour today.